Hey everyone, this is a review of the Craig Mobile Project Center. It's a portable workbench that can be stowed out of the way for space savings when you're not using it, or it can be set up in a remote location where you don't have your normal workbench to uh, work off of. Craig sent this over for me to review. I've been using it for the past few months, and I'm gonna walk you through the features it has and what I like and don't like about it. Setup on this is pretty straightforward and easy. You just put it where you want, pull the bottom legs out, and push the shelf down. Then to set up the tables, you just pick them up. They lock into place automatically. The aluminum T-Track in the center works great with the three inch Automax bench clamp. Uh, you just clamp it down, it's auto adjusting, same clamping force for whatever height material you're working with, make your cuts or drill your holes, and then unfasten. It's really easy to work with these clamps uh, and work pieces. You can also put the clamp on the side like this uh, and use it as a vise. It's pretty sturdy side to side. It does have a little bit of torsional wobble though. Uh, you can take the bracket off and set dogs to the appropriate width of your material and then take a workpiece, put the clamp on the side once again in a different position and you can clamp stuff from the side like this against the dogs. This table is pretty sturdy. The all steel legs uh, and supports help with that. Uh, the rubber feet help keep it from going places. If you get sawdust under them though, they can slide a little bit more. But if I'm pushing down on this and really pushing sideways on it, with regular sneakers on, I move before the table moves. Now if I push completely sideways, yeah, I can slide it, but it doesn't slide very easily. Total capacity for the table in table mode is 350 pounds. If you use these as two sawhorses with another workstation, uh, the combined capacity is 2,200 pounds. I only weigh 135, but you can see me testing it, which by the way, don't do, because there's a warning against that, uh, but it holds up fine. There is a little bit of side-to-side -side wobble, though, if you put weight on opposite sides of the table and shift it back and forth. So the one thing I really don't like about this table is the bottom shelf is pretty flimsy. Uh, if you push down on it, you can see it just bows um, like crazy. So I would not recommend putting heavy items on this. The main purpose of this shelf, I think, is to keep the legs apart for stability, which it does fine with. One thing to note with these legs is they are not height adjustable. Um, so that is one point against them, uh, and there is no leveling mechanism for these legs. So if you're using this on an unlevel surface, your table's just going to be leaning a little bit. So as far as levelness goes on how flat the table surface is, I was mostly concerned about over the T-Track with the two separate wings. It's pretty good. Um, if I push down on one side of the straight edge, you can see there's a little bit of a gap. This is a 1 8 inch setup bar. It will not go under the level. Um, it looks like it's about closer to a 16th out of level from end to end over the 27 and a half inches, which is pretty good. For the wings themselves, lengthwise on the 31 and 3 quarters inch dimension, uh, this one with the steel bar for the T-Track is flat. Uh, it's got about 10 thousandths uh, of an inch that I can fit this feeler gauge under it. That's pretty dang close to perfectly flat. For the back wing here that has the tool wells in it and it doesn't have that reinforced uh, bar in the center. There is a little bit of a gap, about a sixteenth of an inch. Uh, you can see you can see some light through there in this one eighth inch setup bar. Uh, it's about half the height of it, maybe a little bit more uh, that I can see there's a gap. So about a sixteenth of bow in this back one, still not too bad. The dog holes are three quarter inch diameter and they're three and seven eighths inch on center. Uh, you've got two rows here and three rows on this side. Uh, and the center would line up right here for another row, but this is the aluminum T-Track. Now one thing I noticed about this table is on this side, uh, there's only two rows of dog holes. There's not a third one like on the other side. And the reason behind that is this rail right here is a clamping rail. So you can take a regular uh, face clamp from Craig and this bottom larger pad slides right into a T-Track that's on the underside of the table and the clamp just hangs out there. You can slide it back and forth wherever you need it. Uh, when you want to clamp something, there it is. This is really convenient when you're done using it. You just pop it off and you don't even have to worry about holding onto the clamp or setting it down. It just hangs out right there until you need it again. The four dogs that come with this work pretty well. Uh, they have a one and three eighths inch length here and the tabletop is about one and an eighth. So they've got about a quarter of an inch they sit down below the surface. They've got one flat side for putting up as a stop against a workpiece. And then they've got a rubber top where you can put them like kind of like a bench dog and have a grippy surface to, to set something on that's elevated for finishing or sanding or something like that. Uh, one accessory that I bought for this, uh, and I actually have another one on the way because I liked it enough, is this inline clamp. Um, and it sits in the dog hole, and this little lip is purpose designed for the, the, the depth of table this is. And it catches below, and then it can push against your workpiece 
and secure it really quickly and easily with a surprising amount of clamping force. I really like these little tool wells. Uh, you can put fasteners in them, you can put drill bits, uh, small things that would normally roll off the edge of your table. Uh, you can fit them right in here. The edges are rounded, uh, so you can actually blow them out really easily instead of having a bunch of stuff get stuck in here. Um, and you can just roll something up the edge if you want to get it out too, uh, if you can't get your fingers, fingernails under it. So they're a good size. You can fit a, uh, a tray of hardware in there if you want to, um, so it doesn't get knocked off. Uh, just, I really like that it has these, uh, and if you don't need them, uh, they're out of the way, they're sunk down in. This right here is a fastener. If you want to join two of these together, it pops out. Uh, if you push from below, and then pops in here, there's one on the other side that you can grab and put over there beside it and connect two of these work surfaces side by side. So one nice thing Craig has done is they built expandability into these with these brackets. If you've got another uh, mobile project center or if you have a um, track horse, you can stick these in each of them, and in the upper position, you can stick a 2x4 on edge, and it sticks up about an inch and a half off the table surface, so you can put a sheet of plywood up, up on top of here, uh, and have uh, the 2x4s running between the two tables, and you can cut on here without worrying about messing up the table surface. If you want an integrated surface, you can drop one of these wings, put this in the lowest setting, and then put two two by fours between the two tables and a sheet of plywood on top of here and have a continuous surface from this wing to the track and then you'll have plywood and then the other side with either the track horse uh, or the other side of a mobile project center. So takedown's pretty easy, you can do it all from one side. Just gotta kinda lean over the far side a little bit uh, and then just grab this bottom shelf and fold it up. Now. Uh, they do have carrying handles all the way down here in this bottom shelf, but I'm, I'm a short guy. I don't have long arms. I'm 5'3", and I can't get my hand down here unless I hunch over, and it's not a good carrying configuration for me. I'm, I'm just kind of leaning over. I can't get my whole arm down there. If you're taller, you're going to be able to pick it up like that. If you're shorter, um, I'd say probably if you're 5'6", or under, you're going to have problems picking this up that way. Um, so... What I end up doing is I just grab both sides of the bottom of the table and make sure I keep it together and carry it like that. Weight on this is around 40 pounds, I think. It's actually not that bad uh, for the stability you get. I think it's definitely worth having something that heavy um, because you don't want a light little table. One thing to note, the top of this table, when you've got the sides down, uh, does have a warning on each side for pinch points, and it is pretty easy to get your finger caught in here uh, and get a pretty bad blood blister. I haven't done so myself, but I've seen lots of reports of other people doing so. One thing Craig could have done that would have helped mitigate this is have the sides of the table locked down when it's in the stowed position, uh, but unfortunately it doesn't do that, so you just got to be careful. Another nice thing Craig integrated with this is a mounting location for the K5 and the K4 uh, pocket hole jigs. And they've just got a spot here for a number 10 screw. I think you'll need about a two inch long screw. And on the bottom is a spot that will hold a hex nut captive. So you can screw your jig right down on top of this. Now that's a pretty permanent installation though. And I didn't want to have to mess with uninstalling and reinstalling it. So I came up with a solution of my own. I put the jig on a board and I drilled three quarter inch holes right here that line up with the dog holes and I set everything on top and just pop the dogs down and it's a pretty sturdy setup doesn't move on the table you can clamp and unclamp and when you're done you just pick straight up and it comes off much easier than using uh, the number 10 screws to put it on and off every time I'd only do this if I was going to have a permanent setup with the jig mounted here the one side has two drill holders, uh, so you can do a drill and an impact. Uh, an 18 volt drill fits in there pretty easily uh, and can keep out of the way on the rest of the work surface. Um, one thing to note though, if your drill has a wider front end, uh, like this FlexiClick, it won't sit in there. Um, and actually, I, I don't want to leave this one in there because I'm afraid I'd bend this smaller drill bit. And if you want to use this as a sawhorse and have a sacrificial top on it, it actually comes with hardware to do so. It's got a little bushing here that'll hold it off the distance of the T-track and a screw. And you can use a 2x4 that's about 32 inches long uh, and set it up like so. You just got to make sure not to overdrive this thing or it won't fit in the T-track. So once you've got those installed, just flip it over and slide them in.
Now you've got a surface you can cut on without worrying about messing up the aluminum T-Track. Price point on this is $160. Uh, it is on the upper end of portable workbench price range, uh, but it does come with the clamping accessories of the dogs and the bench clamp, uh, which together are about $40 if you buy them separately. This does offer a pretty big work surface. It's pretty sturdy, pretty flat, uh, and it's got a variety of clamping solutions that Craig has really integrated well uh, with the table. So I like that they've designed it around their accessories so you can have a whole system uh, to work with here. You can buy more of these bench clamps, you can buy bigger ones, you can buy more of these inline clamps, uh, and their face clamps work really well with this rail right here. Uh, so I really do like the system they've built here, uh, and I think it justifies the price. So overall, I think this is a great workbench. Uh, there were a couple cons, uh, but for the most part, I really, really like it. So let me know if you have any questions in the comments section below, and once again, don't forget to subscribe.